John Berger says that the way we see things is affected by what we know or what we believe. I believe we are in an age of amelioration. Amelioration is defined as the act of making something better or improvement. And I love this word because it's not dissimilar to the word annihilation, something which we're all really good at when it comes to what we look like and our body image. And whilst the campaign for diversity in all shapes and sizes has begun, we're by no means there yet. So let me ask you a personal question. What does your mind tell your body when you look in the mirror? Does it say, well, hey there, you're looking pretty good today? Or does it say, you're having a fat day, you need to lose some weight? Or, you're looking pretty ugly today? Or, you're looking pretty old? I suggest that neither of these self-analyses are actually correct, the good ones or the bad ones, and here's why. When we look in a mirror, we take in our whole body image. An image can be a dangerous word, because image in part is defined as the general impression that a person, organisation or product presents to the public. Great word that presents, because it's kind of suggesting a detachment from what is actually there. So it's kind of like saying, here's a version of myself I want you to see. So when we look in the mirror, we take in short or tall, slim or large, old or young, ugly or good looking, and a whole host of other things by where we judge ourselves. And then the, crit and then the critique which we've all mastered begins. My shoulders aren't broad enough, my hips are too wide. The lines on my face are getting far more defined. But we are looking at reflective versions of ourselves, and we've built these illusions of image over centuries. And we've started to assess how we might measure up to the ideal, whatever that ideal means for each and every one of us. Worse still, this makes judges of us in our communities. So it affects not just how we see and feel about ourselves, but how we perceive and judge others. So here's a more truthful and authentic way of understanding and perceiving ourselves. We need to look at ourselves with our eyes and not in a mirror. Because then you'll come to see that you can't take in the whole body image. You can only take in parts at a time. So you can maybe take in an arm and a hand, a thigh and a knee, a chest and a stomach. And then you start to see there are a series of lines, shapes, and contours. And this is what makes up the composition of our physical selves. And when we break it down in this way, this is what I call true seeing. So hold your arm up in the air like this. And then trace the line from the top of your little finger, all the way down to your elbow and up to your shoulder. And just take in that line for a second. It's a pretty cool shape, right? So forget yourself for a second, forget the physical identity that makes up you, and take in all these groups and shapes and lines and contours in their most basic but abstract form. Take these lines here, for example. They're from this guy here. And these lines here, they're from this lady here. So I am an artist, so these lines and contours, in and off and down, are magnificent to me. They produce some of the best uh, lines and contours in a painting, and it makes it makes life a lot easier for me as a painter when I've got something a bit more interesting to draw. So a painting that starts like this will end up looking like this. So here you can see that what I'm doing here is creating a wrestle between the body portrait or body image and the abstract lines and contours which we actually and really see of ourselves. So a photograph like this, when drawn, looks like this. And this is from this beautiful lady here. So you can see the lines, shapes and contours make up the architecture of our bodies. A home we must feel comfortable in without judgment. These lines, shapes, and contours make up the landscapes of our body, or you could call them bodyscapes. <coughs> and as well as the lines on our bodies, we mustn't forget the lines on our faces. 
because we all love to scrutinize these as we get older. Check out this line on this cheek. This line's from my cheek, and it's getting far more defined the older I get. And I studied it for a long time, and I've come to love it because it carries my stories. It carries many episodes of my tears, many episodes of my laughter, squinting into the sunshine, sunshine while I'm looking into the ocean, and not to mention the workout I give it when painting or drawing, otherwise known as my concentration phase. But I'll explain the pain for my looks like. And also, the other thing I'd love to point out is scars, because these make it even more interesting and beautiful stories to paint. So perceiving the body in this close-up and fragmented manner, I believe can make us happier, both individually and collectively. We must deconstruct before we can reconstruct a perception of the body that is not only more real and devoid of society's idealism, but one that is far more beneficial to the mind's eye. I believe that each and every one, is, one of us is compositionally stunning and entirely different. And like our minds, it's not fame and attention our bodies need, but recognition and connection. And it's time to tell our minds to stop using the body as an ego assassin or ego assistant. We're far more beautiful in line, shape, or contour than the man-made delusion of body image which strokes or destroys the ego. So I say rebel against the rules of body image because they aren't real, we made them up. There is no other body like yours out there. How amazing is that? So take time to honor it.